you protect someone and their loved ones. And you damn well better take the responsibility of providing him that protection. If you don't, you're nothing but a con man. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Atlas Survival Shelters. I hope you're all doing great today. Guys, if you haven't seen my channel before, we cover bomb shelters, we cover uh, survival gear, prepper stuff, and anything related to the survival industry. I cover good companies, bad companies, good products, bad products, and products that I recommend for you and products I don't recommend for you. And today, we're going to cover a product that I don't think I could recommend to anybody. So let me tell you the story. So, there's an expert guy out there named Rock French, okay? Now, I met Rock about eight years ago at a survival show, and he is a freaking genius when it comes to bunkers, and he works on, like, the military stuff, billion-dollar projects and stuff. And uh, But we became friends at the show, and or we became friendly, and, and uh, when I need somebody to come and look at my shelters to try to get a, a point of view where you could make it better, I always called on this guy. And so he is behind a lot of the engineering on the Atlas Survival Shelter, from the air pipes to the, instead of using like cast iron fittings, we use a solid steel forge uh, fitting. So if there's a ground slap, it doesn't break the fit. I mean, there's all kinds of improvements this guy made on my bunker to where the last time he came and saw it, he just couldn't come up with anything else. It's like, we've done all we can do, now I'll just make more of them. So anyway, so I did a video a couple weeks ago that I took down because uh, the people, the company, and I can't say the company's name, uh, but uh, it's my competitor. So you guys who watch my channel know who my competitor is. I did a video, went to their bunker. This guy paid a half a million dollars for a bunker, and he called me up and says, Hey, I watched your video. I would like to get my bunker fitted with all the things that Atlas does, from the air systems to the air pipes to the gas tight doors to the 90 degree entry. All these things that makes Atlas Survival Shelter so wonderful. I didn't know about you guys when I bought my bunker. So he hadn't heard about me. And uh, so, and he was in a rush to get a shelter. And these guys happened to be in Texas. So he just bought a bunker from these guys and trusted them to give him a bunker that would be worthy of a half million dollars. And of course, he got what he got. And now he knows the truth and he's not very happy with it. So anyway, so I want to give a third opinion on a shelter and not just have you guys get my opinion so this expert was in dallas he came in and i said hey listen i want you to go inspect the guy's bunker and uh, i want a third party opinion on this bunker so this video that you're about to see is just us going back uh just a couple days ago and visiting this guy's bunker and uh let's get his opinion on what how he feels about the shelter and how he feels about this company Let's just call this company for now uh, Failing Shelters, okay? Because it definitely didn't pass. So uh, we'll call them Failing Shelters, okay? So uh, try to enjoy the video. So this is a, about a 45 degree. The first step is not even right. These stairs are very dangerous. They're not cold, and there's no gamma or neutron attenuation here. You gotta have a right angle. The distance of the, say this is 10 feet, gotta be a right angle that goes 20 feet. Two to one. All right, so this is the, this is the main entrance door here. Guys, when Atlas says watertight, we don't mean bolted together with silicone. We mean we weld all the seams and you don't end up with water leaking in your bunker because they don't weld it. And then see what the water's doing? It's causing everything to rust here. Look at the bolts completely rusted out. Hey, you need to replace all these bolts with galvanized bolts. I don't think you can even get them off now because they're all rusted, but Actually, take it out and weld it up. 
Bring a MIG in here and weld it up. Well, this one does need to be welded because it's leaky. Yeah. But these bolts but, like this uh, one here just completely rusted out. That one's not. A uh, 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 corrugated plastic pipe is perforated. Mm -hmm. No French drink. Wow. They put in a shelter without a French drain, and they're supposed to be professionals. There is nothing that goes underground that doesn't need a perimeter drain, a French drain. What do you do is you, just below the height of the floor, you have a perforated plastic pipe, and it has a skirt around it. Keeps it from filling with mud, and then you run it out to a point where it called daylight and a gravity so that any moisture that's in the soil will collect in that pipe be daylighted away and you wouldn't have this leak you know if they did something as simple as that it, it's against the UBC the International Building Code to put anything underground that doesn't have a perimeter drain There's really not a lot we can do about it to fix it. Now, you can come in here and do what's called mud. We'll seal it with bentonite. We can uh, either drill holes. Actually, I got some. I got some material that uh, I'll send around the specs. I'll send it to you. You'll drill holes in the wall and you'll screw. Zerk heads into it, and then you inject it into it. It expands, it hits the water, and it expands 22 times. And it will seal that up, yeah, yeah that's just like rubber, yeah. And it'll seal all the way around this thing. You put like one every 10 inches, okay. And the best time to do this one is wet, <clears throat> and you pump this in there because a grease gun has between five and 15,000 PSI. I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? That's a lot. <clears throat> yeah. You can, once it hits the water, it turns into rubber, a foam that just expands and will seal the whole damn thing. And that's your easiest way of doing it. Guys, I hope you're enjoying my Atlas Survival Shelter video. Guys, this coronavirus opened the eyes to a lot of people. So many people are not prepared. I'm going to tell you how I get prepared. I go to this company called BePrepared.com and I get my emergency essentials there. They carry their own brand. They have Mountain House. They have all the utensils and devices to heat the food and to cook the food. And guys, if you use the code ATLAS, you get an additional 5% off any order you purchase with them. So guys, go to BePrepared.com, get your food, and be prepared like me. So back to the video. All right, so first thing, go, Brock, inspect this air system. Let him turn it on for you. Where's the switch? I'll let Rock do it. Um, where's the switch at? Right here. There's the switches right here. That one there? There's two of them here. Here, I'll let Rock mess with it. Get in there. Check your airflow. Well, you got but, the caps on. No, no, no. Well, you, you only take those off if you hook up the air for filter. But go to the regular. See how much air is coming out? Yeah, it ain't much. It ain't much at all. I mean, it's... That's the same people that make the one for American City. No, this is... They, they made their own. They knocked off. The Looks system. like you're using the same filters. Are they activated carbon? I don't know. They're they're, they're making their own. Have you taken it apart to see what they look like? Have you got a diagram? Well, you, you, we don't have time to break it down now. But enough. check the airflow down there. Yeah, I did. It's, it's just not high enough. Where are your uh, relief valves and vents? Okay. Well, here there's another vent here. So let me turn this one off. That's not blown enough. This is the filter. Oh yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, that's the same filter. Check the uh, the doors there. Open those up. One of the these things are. 
Yeah. And then we need to tap on these shells here. Like paper thin. Yeah. Well, it looks like you got it set up for exhaust or intake. Well, aren't there any on this end? This is the other air system. No, I mean, aren't there any other vents? Yeah. There's, there's one more. Because it Throw. needs to be on the other side of where you're sleeping. Because when you breathe, you want the air to move across the area that you're in. If you've got the air intake here and the exhaust over there, you're going to build up massive CO2 over here and it's not going to affect it at all. So this is why you put one on one side of the bunker and one on the other. And, and your and exhaust area in between. Be 18 inches from the floor. CO2 is heavier and it builds up lower. Is there an exhaust back here? Not there. There's one. This That's is the not bathroom. good. You need to at least get a fan in here. You know, like a little 12 volt reciprocating fan. That'll do it. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Or a little. This water. air system's really it's bad. Good. I mean, this just has no air. Volume, but you need to have one here. Just nothing, hardly. I mean, that's just hardly nothing. And you got a mat? I said that this thing wouldn't even put out a mat. I thought, yeah. do you have a mat? You can hear how quiet it is. And oh yeah, it's blowing. But uh, that's all the noise the air system makes. And that's not even filtered. If that was filtered, it wouldn't have enough suction to go through the, we have enough suction to go through the, um, to the air system. This is how the shelter's bolted together with these three ace bolts and caulk. Rock, you seen this escape over here? I'd worry about having immediate access into the hatch and having no protection for gamma and neutron attenuation. Anytime you have a direct route in, it's a direct route for gamma and neutron also. Now if you're not worried about that, then it's nothing to worry about. But the fact is this should be full of water or sand so that anybody who finds it is going to have to go through it before they can get at you and you'll well, hear them have you noticed what's keeping this thing locked up there yeah i know that's um pretty chicken shit it is chicken shit this bunker cost a half million dollars this bunker cost a half a million dollars i hate telling you that now you probably don't want to hear it but this this something here is already resting underneath the floor there See, I went for a paperless toilet. I put a uh, septic. Yeah, but I mean, have you actually sat down and figured, you got women with you? You're talking about a pallet of toilet tissue per year. No, they get one a, mo one a month per person. <laughs> oh, you're looking for a divorce, my friend. Oh, I already had that. No. Just spray some water in there. No, paperless toilet's your best bet. Oh, looks like you bought a couple of Kalashnikovs. Oh, wow, you did pickles. God, I'd love to have some of those. And okra, too. I love oh, he's got, he's those. Got, he's got a ton of food. You got good food. That's the same food I've got. A mountain house, that's the best right there. Yeah. So we're in a natural bunker with mountain house food and actually preserved food. Yeah. Where's the overpressure blast valve in this room? It doesn't have one. There's, only two. one. there's only two. There's one back in there and one back in there. Rock, how many should there be? Well, in this particular situation, this is dangerous not having some kind of way of circulating the air out of in there. You close them doors yeah. and they breathe all night. Damn good chance. CO2, you need to get some CO2 monitors. Yeah. yeah. You get over 1.8 CO2 and you need to have a monitor go off. Yeah. At 2, you're dead. 2% will kill you. Just go to sleep. Yeah. It's just a peaceful way to die. But spend all this money and then die yeah. because you're not getting very neat. It's a propane. 
That's and I have a propane monitor. And I was going to bury a propane tank to run these. Propane is your best bet, yeah. Well, what I was I was looking at some solar. Uh, to take solar a lot of electric. Those are probably five kW. I was looking at some solar hot water heater. Oh, it's, that's a darn good idea. Yeah, that's what I was going to. But gonna you know they won't take that. impact. Okay, so the propane. They make a, That's why you got a propane monitor, a gas monitor. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Um, it's a good system. And you can get some good ones right now from that's a little better. GE that'll hold up the yeah. And having a propane stove in here is a bad idea. Number one, you're introducing gas. You get a gas leak in there, and all of a sudden, Something sparks it. Those are those are propane. What are they? They're uh, alcohol. Alcohol. Okay, that's better. But you're still getting CO2 and you're still getting heat. If you okay, go, like no fumes or something. If you go look in that storage room, there's 10 50 gallon deals of alcohol. Oh, okay. Well, nice to have the alcohol. The alcohol is a lot safer. Look at that. What happens when you uh, release oxygen in a bunker with a flame? It blows to pieces. There you go. You get percent oxygen in the environment. The Apollo 8, the reason it burned up was they had high oxygen. In a high oxygen environment, even the spark from a thermostat will transmit through the air. Anything of combustible material, yeah. when it's saturated with oxygen, will burn. Those poor folks mm -hmm. burned by the seat covers, their uniforms, everything ignited. I recommend that we use electric heat at all. And induction, microwaves. All you need is hot water. You don't need to be cooking gourmet meals. So you all they got to do is heat water. Huh? I mean, if he's got a solar hot water, then you're going to have hot water. Now, what's that? I just got up the water. Oh, that's at the door entry and does that come back every week no just if heavy heavy rains so it's have you up. uh considered the idea that you really don't need to heat up your food that much well it just takes longer you can hydrate it without yeah, hot water it just takes longer it's not going to taste as good but uh and you can literally just put beans in water itself. That's, exactly right. that's what I would do. Yeah, and that may be... And you know, a 12 volt electrical oven. Okay, all right, well that's it. We gotta get going. All right guys, so that was Rock walking through the bunker. When you get a chance to sit in a car with a man with a 189 IQ and five master's degrees, you pick his brain for all you can. So, I want you to hear his opinion of how he feels about the kind of people that would produce such a product and take a person's money for it. All right, so um, I had this world expert, Rock French, go ahead and inspect that bunker. So what was your opinion on that bunker? I mean, convenient place to leave bodies. Uh, it's a death trap. You, you don't stand a chance of survival in there. There's nowhere near enough air. It doesn't seal right. It's way too easy to get into. Hot water system is propane piss poor idea. Is propane gas. bad or good in a bunker? It's a good way to die. Well, because I don't put propane in my bunkers. I always no one ever flammable. puts propane in their bunker. There, there are guidelines on several nations: Finland, Norway, Sweden, Israel. Every one of them tells you no propane in a bunker. Well, it's just a way of killing yourself what one, one good gas leak and what will happen you either die from the gas or it'll explode so you know, so did that shelter pass the inspection or fill it no I was too many problems I'll, I'll help him as much as I can to solve the problems that he's got but uh, there's some serious problems there and whoever installed it you know the fact that they didn't put a perimeter there is no building code, the IBC, the UBC, nothing that allows you to put anything underground without a French drain. That's just stupid. You know, there's plenty of room there at the daylight, a French drain. 
there's no reason that they should have to worry about water inundation. <clears throat> there's no reason that that the entryway should be anything but protected. They are not protected. They're, so what's it, the, what's be, the I'd call it a fallout shelter, but that's all it would be. It, it's not an NBC. It's an NBC fallout shelter. And even that, you got to worry about contamination because the entryways and the air intake and air exhaust are woefully inadequate. But it will not survive a blast. It just won't. And I, I'm sorry for him. Uh, when you consider what he could have had for the same amount of money, it would have given him the protection he was looking for. The air intakes were poorly placed. The air exhausts weren't thought out at all. I mean, you have to, oxygen and carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, one's heavy, one's light. So you bring in air at one point and you exhaust it at another. Your exhaust should always be 18 inches from the ground. So you remove the higher concentrates. None of those were, the exhausts were they were really small. There, there was no way that you were using those exhaust vents properly. Um, and as for EMP, it's a joke. There was nothing to it in EMP that could be considered EMP. Um, I'll do the best I can to help. So the stairs are steep as hell. There's no way those are regulation. You know. You've got a fall and a pitch to all stairs. Those are maybe six, seven inches wide with a seven, eight inch drop. That, that's not legal anywhere. Even the military don't do that shit. You break your neck in that. Thing. Why do you need the 90 degree turn in the staircase? To attenuate. Now this is only necessary in a true bomb shelter, something that is designed to attenuate gamma and neutron. In a fallout shelter, I guess you really don't. It would be a smart thing to do because when something happens, those people will be dead and the courts will be gone. And that, that's literally the way they say it. Uh, I find that incredibly offensive and I will not deal with those people. You know. If you're being hired to protect someone and their loved ones, then you damn well better take the responsibility of providing him that protection. If you don't, you're nothing but a con man. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed listening to Rock Talk. Now, I have a lot of respect for him. He's been doing this over 30 years, so he knows what he's doing. So, um... You know, one of the things I just found is the guy who made this bunker is a pretty big Tom BSer. And if you guys want to hear some of his BS, uh, he just did an interview and put a video out on YouTube on the Chad Prather Show. I'll put a link below and I'll show the image right here. He did an episode called 30 Days from Doomsday. Maybe you guys should go over there and watch this guy talk and uh, claim that he, uh, this is a thing. I watched part of the video there. Man, this guy, man, he's claiming he's burying these bunkers 11 to 30 feet deep, yet the bunker we just showed was 18 inches deep. He's claiming the material is cold roll steel when I know it's hot roll steel. I mean, cold roll steel is like really hard. Hot roll steel is just cheap and inexpensive. And then he's claiming he's powder coating these things. And he's not powder coating these shelters. I've seen him in the rust, okay? It's, it's not even being sandblasted like we do at Atlas. We sandblast ours, okay? So anyway, but, you know, I'm quite upset when I see people like this guy um, taking advantage of people. And uh, it just upsets me because I'm trying to do it right and other people are trying to get rich, it looks like. So anyway, so guys, as always, I need your support. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. Now, this video was made for those people who are interested in buying a bunker. This isn't the kind of video I made to go viral. But if you're my loyal followers, make sure... You go check this uh, video out on that Chad Prather show. Maybe leave a comment below. Let him know what kind of guests he had on his show. But anyway, guys, 
See you on the next video. As always, love you.